Okay, welcome. Welcome everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are uh, at this moment. Uh, my name is Luis Enrique Vanegas from Tommy Digital, uh, a platform, Tommy Digital, that is made for teachers uh, to create lessons interactively, to innovate in the classroom, to bring technology to the classroom, to be that tech savvy teacher. Uh, what we are doing here today is um, a very special series that we have designed, that we have developed for you, teachers in Africa and in other parts around the world, that is focusing on a new paradigm in education, how to implement learner-centered education, how to change the paradigm of being uh, the teacher being the center of everything that goes that, that goes on in the classroom and letting the student be in the center, make decisions, participate of their own learning process. So get ready because we are about to start. here with us uh, that have been here with us for the last two workshops are from uh, the country Ghana, the African country Ghana, which is a country that uh, we now, uh, we already have a very, uh, very deep feelings about it, a very positive feelings about it because the people there have been very receptive, very welcoming. They have uh, joined the, the, the challenge of becoming better teachers every time. But I know there is a lot of teachers that are coming from other countries. So, teachers, where are you from? Where are you located right now? Please write in the comments, in the comment section, who you are, what's your name, and where you are located, because we would like to say hello to you before everything else. Before we start uh, talking about education, before we start talking about uh, learner-centered teaching, we would just want to uh, recognize and welcome you uh, and, and just act as what we want to be, a community of people that are worried about bettering education. So let me know where you are. I can see some people here. So let me just say hi to Maxwell. Maxwell, welcome. Thank you for being here. Abdullahi, thank you very much for being here. I can see being Noel Kilo uh, is also here from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Yaoundé, Cameroon, the capital city in Cameroon. Thank you very much for being here. There's a lot of a lot of teachers from Cameroon that have been uh, joining us in the last workshops. Uh, from Zambia, Mary, Mary Mambue from Zambia. Uh, I want to take advantage of this opportunity to say hello to Mr. Tom, teacher uh, Tom Junior Banda from Zambia, who was here with us in the last workshop, and he was talking about active methodologies in a very very beautiful way he was he's a very energetic teacher one of those those teachers that you can tell that students uh, like hanging out with and and, and and participating in their classrooms and also for the first workshop mr abdul fatal uh, ibrahim was also here with us he's from ghana uh, and we also say hello to him and, and thank you very much for 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 your uh, support and today we have another special guest, but that's for later. I'll let you know who that person is later, but uh, I can tell you it's a very interesting teacher uh, that brings uh, a very interesting uh, tool to work in the classrooms 
uh, with uh, subjects that are scientific. So if you are a science teacher, if you're a mathematics teacher, if you're a chemistry teacher, uh, this is going to be very special for you. You're going to learn a very interesting tool to work with your students and to move towards learner-centered education. So, Irine, from Kenya. Welcome. Welcome, Irine. Catherine, from Kenya as well. Wow, a lot of people from Kenya. Good. Ismail, from Kenya. Nice. Maxwell, welcome. Georgina, uh, welcome. Uh, Abdullah, I, also, I already said hello to you. Welcome. Uh, Taonga, from Zambia. Cool. Teachers from everywhere in Africa, Eastern Africa, Western Africa. It's very nice for us to see you here with us. Uh, Sidembile from South Africa. Very nice to have you here. We have a, a community in South Africa that are already using the, the platform for teachers, Dominant Digital. Uh, not so many teachers coming to, the, to these, these workshops, but I, I know that very, very soon uh, as we develop more uh, training strategies, you're going to be, uh, the community is going to be growing. Uh, Inusa from Ghana. Inusa, I know that you are one of those that have been here for, for, for the workshops. So thank you very much. Forzon from Ghana as well. Welcome. So welcome, everybody. Remember, my name is Luis Enrique Vanegas. I am actually located in Colombia, in Medellin, Colombia at the moment. And I am part of an organization called Tommy Digital. We have products that are uh, elaborated for education, that are uh, that have a special focus on how to help teachers become better teachers in the classroom, more innovative and more technological. So that's our, our uh, goal in terms of the products. But here, what we are doing here is to pursuing a, a bigger goal, which is to create a community of people that are worried about uh, advancing, evolving education in the world. Okay, today, uh, we're going to be talking about, this is the second session that is focused on, that is concentrated on this question. How can we implement learner-centered teaching? The first workshop was uh, uh, based on another question, which was, why should we implement learner-centered teaching? So we discussed uh, very interesting ideas. We actually got a lot of ideas from the teachers attending that uh, session in which they would uh, mention uh, different reasons why they believed uh, the paradigm of learner-centered education should be the new paradigm in education. We understand that, uh, that by removing the teacher, by removing yourself as a teacher from the center and placing the student in the center of the process, the student is going to become more aware of what's going on and what is that that they should be doing, learning, trying, and, and, and working on. And when the student realizes that, he's going to come look for the teacher as a guide, as an instructor, as uh, the person that knows uh, about it, even if it's not everything about the topic, but knows something about the topic and, and that can guide them through the process of acquiring new knowledge, okay, about uh, through the process of learning new things. And in the second workshop, we covered for uh, the first part of the question, how should we implement, how should we be trying to implement learner-centered teaching? So we heard from a lot of different teachers that have already uh, tried new strategies in the classroom uh, their experiences and, and, and the results that they get when they uh, apply this new paradigm. So what did we talk about uh, on the last workshop? So we talked about, especially about uh, active methodologies, for example, project-based learning, for example, design thinking, for example, challenge-based learning, and many others uh, like gamification, flipped classroom, which are uh, methodologies that, are, uh, that have a focus on analysis, a focus on collaborative work, a focus on creativity, which are those goals that are the, the, the goals that we should be worried about. We mentioned uh, interesting 
things. For example, uh, how we understand that the learner center teaching paradigm is not really new, right? We actually had uh, experiences that were uh, related to, to, to learner center teaching in our studying experience, right? So when I was a kid, I remember that I had some interesting lessons with some uh, cool teachers, nice teachers, smart teachers, uh, in which they made me think, they made me analyze, they made me collaborate with other students in order to reach a specific ending. Uh, and that's what we want to do uh, with our students. Uh, all, everyone that is here is worried about that. So we have already done some, applied some strategies. We have already tried some new activities, but uh, what we're doing here is just collecting information, collecting ideas from all the community, just to, to have uh, new ideas, newer ideas on how to implement this product. We're going to be talking about three different topics today. And those three topics are going to be um, directed to answering the question, how can we implement the new product? And how can we implement learner-centered teaching? The first one is STEM education and STEAM education. All right, have you heard of it? Do you know it? Have you tried it? Okay, so we'll be talking about that. We're also going to focus for a while in one specific tool that uh, belongs to the STEM education, which is the FET tool, P-H-E-T. Do you know it? Have you heard of it? All right, so do not worry because you're going to learn uh, a lot about that today. And finally, we're going to be covering for what I call I'm going to be covering for, for, for one specific topic that, that is, is one of those uh, papers that I call the new global standards. So I'm not saying there are uh, people developing global standards for education. Uh, we understand that's, I don't know, I mean, it may be happening. Uh, I'm not sure, it may be happening. But uh, with, we know that differences in terms of culture are good reasons to understand that education is somehow different in different regions of the world. One of the interesting exercises that we do in these workshops is that we discuss and, and have a conversation between education in Latin America and education in Africa. And we can see that there's a lot of uh, familiar elements, similar elements, but there's also a lot of differences. And that is good because culturally we are diverse and, and that's what makes us rich and that's what makes us interesting, and that's what makes us want to, to, to meet all the people around the world. Okay, so finally, we will be talking about uh, one of these uh, papers, which is the 21st century skills. 21st century skills of development uh, that was deployed by uh, UNESCO. Uh, it was 2002 when they started talking and discussing with a lot of different scholars, a lot of different uh, people that are, that are very worried about what's coming uh, next for, for the world, what is coming in the future, okay? So what should we be worried about? We know that the teaching practice, the teaching uh, work is, is a, a, a practice that, that requires that we are always thinking what is, what, what is going to happen next? What's going to come in 10 years, in 20 years? What are my students going to, what are those challenges that my students are going to be facing in uh, five years from now, in 10 years from now, in 20 years from now? And that's what we try to do, try to approach in terms of education. So these people got together and they determined what were those skills that we wanted our students to have in order to be able to develop themselves to, to, to help the humanity uh, overcome issues, uh, to, to uh, make the world better, and also to have a good life. So we're going to be talking about that just a little bit, because remember that uh, what we want here is just to open a conversation, but the rest is for you to just continue researching, reading, uh, discussing with your partners, and also discussing in our community. I want to take a moment to remind you that if you want to be updated in terms of all the strategies that we follow in Tomina Digital, 
So you may as well follow us on our Facebook site, okay, uh, Tommy Digital Interactive Lessons. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tommy Digital Interactive Lessons as well. Uh, and you'll be able to, to, to know everything and to, to be updated and to get notifications on what we're doing at the moment. And also, I would like you to, to know that there's a Telegram community at the moment that, uh, uh, that is collecting people from Africa, teachers from Africa specifically, that are, they are there to, to receive notifications and information and, and special offers and everything, but also to maintain this communication going, to keep this communication going and to, and to keep this conversation going at all time. Okay, so if you're interested, uh, I, I usually send a link uh, on my emails, but I'm also going to share the link here in a very short while. And finally, as an introduction, I just wanted to mention that there, this uh, series of workshops contain an ebook. And for that, I'm going to share my screen because I want you to take a look at it because it's one of the, the things that make that make that make us more proud at the moment. So let me share my screen. Here it is. There you go. So this is the ebook, the one that I'm going to be sharing in later on, and I'm going to be sharing uh, in an email after the workshop for you, for everyone that is registered to this series of workshops. And it contains the, the the whole conversation that we have been having here. So the first question, why implement this paradigm that was for workshop one, covers for some specific ideas. And over here, you can take a look at those ideas, read more, get some quotes, get some links to visit uh, uh, some organizations and other people that, that are worried about it and get a better understanding of this paradigm of learner-centered education. So just take a look at it. And uh, there was a, there's a very interesting uh, uh, place in here in which we say, who is uh, responsible for the implementation of this paradigm? And that's the second square. We, we talked on that workshop, how, uh, how are teachers responsible for this new paradigm, the implementation of this new paradigm? But we also learned that it's not only the teachers, all right? We need students that are also uh, uh, engaged in this new paradigm. And we need a society that knows that education needs to change and why education needs to change. So we change. So we only uh, included here parents and government, so policymakers. But we know that it's about everybody, OK? So if you want to uh, know more about this, just and remember that you can visit our ebook at any time and get all the information from there. Last workshop was focused on this question, how can this paradigm be implemented? And we covered for some active methodologies that we're um, we about to see over here. Uh, there you go, active methodologies, for example, gamification, flipped classroom, project-based learning, design thinking, and challenge-based learning. If you want to know more about that, just click on the info button and you will get some extra information to get ideas on how to develop these elements. We are also recommending some uh, special talks, for example, a TED Talk, and some videos, podcasts, and different resources that you can visit in order to get a better idea of uh, this implementation. And today, we're actually going to focus on changing the paradigm. So how can we change the paradigm? We have UNESCO's 21st century skills, okay? Specifically, uh, we think it is important to talk about the four C's, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity. Uh, we need to understand there's new realities. For example, COVID and lockdown was the one that we uh, discussed about. Uh, that the new reality that definitely changed and shaped the, 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 the world and the society uh, in, in a way. Uh, online education that is working, uh, that is going on and is, that is developing and is advancing probably to get uh, even, uh, to grow even more in the future, in the near future. Uh, also, we have different uh, situations, issues, political issues 
going on around the world that are definitely changing the way we look at the future, the way we, we, we see the future and, and, and the way we analyze the future in terms of what do we need to make our future better? How, how, what do we need to make the world a better place for our uh, children, for our students, for everybody? And the newer ICT specifically, we wanted to talk about AI, artificial intelligence, just how this is becoming part of everything, how artificial intelligence is becoming part of everything that we uh, know and how we can use it, how we can understand it better and, and how, how can we direct it towards education. All right, but in order to start, I think it's time to uh, introduce our a special guest because we're going to start talking about STEM education. So before we introduce our special guest, I just want to show you a short video that we, uh, that our, our um, friends in FET uh, provided us and which shows a little bit of what FET simulations are. So please take a look at this video and Everything that you do not understand, just write it in the comments because we're going to have a special guest answering those questions in, in just a moment. Here is the video. See you in a moment. So FED is a collection of over 100 interactive simulations for teaching and learning science. They're all free on the web. You can run them online or you can download them to your computer. We have simulations in physics and chemistry, and a growing number in earth science, biology, and math. One of the main goals of FET is to provide students with an open exploratory environment where they can really engage with the science content like a scientist. I love the FET simulations. I find that uh, they're really fun even for me to play with. Before it was all on a page and now you can actually see it. You see what's going on when you connect, you know, two wires and a battery like and you see the flow of each electron and how electrons affected by resistance and, and like you see everything. That's what I love about it. One way that I use simulations is I ask quicker questions around them to really focus what students are thinking about and trying to process. Sometimes I'm using it as a demonstration, as a really effective way to describe a dynamic system to the students. I've used sims in homeworks. I have used the sims in tutorials where they play basically the role of some experimental equipment. Without having to make a mess, so I don't have to like take ice and melt it and do all that, we can look, first you see it as a solid, you know, and you see the temperature, and then you can turn it into a liquid and you can observe the difference on a micro level that matches pretty well what they see at the macro level. We should show them to us in class and we'd play with them on our own and it just gave us a chance to, you know, see how everything worked. One of the unique things about FET is that it's research-based. Both in its design of, this, of the simulations, we draw from research across different areas. They spend a lot of time testing, beta testing, and revising with students. And uh, there's no substitute for that. I'm very visual. I always picture the molecules bouncing around in that, and that's really how I think about what's happening in a system. So I find that FETs match very well with the way I visualize what's happening in the system. I can show them what's in my head. In a real circuit, they can only infer that electrons are flowing through wires by the brightness of the bulbs. but. In FET sims, they can see the electrons. One of the things that, that FET allows that other things don't allow is when something spontaneously comes up in class and I can say, let's test it. What happens when I put a light bulb or a battery in here? What happens when I put a pencil um, into this circuit? We make the simulations highly interactive so that when students move a slider or create a different setting, they get immediate feedback as to the effect of making that change. That is a really powerful way to learn. You learn what's important and what's not important. We developed this saying in Physics 3, let's FET it out. Like, some of us would disagree and like, we were like, well, let's just check the FET. Simulations allow you to go beyond what you can do in real life quickly. Using computer simulations, we can slow down time. We can dive inside an atom. I think FET 
definitely provides real world examples, things that in the classroom you can't see or get your hands on at all. If we change planets or gravitational fields or time or the number of coils on a wire and see immediately what the impact of these are. We really want to make things intuitive enough in terms of user interface so that when students sit down they don't really need instructions in order to know how to use the simulation. And when students use a FET simulation they're focused on the physics, not how do, how do I run this simulation. Uh, that's all been made very simple. It takes you about a minute or two to sit down and, and figure out all that it can do and, and actually start learning from it. I've never heard a student give me negative feedback about a FET sim. They're a lot of fun, you know, when whether it's, you know, shooting pianos out of cannons or uh, doing quantum mechanics tunneling. It gets you interested in it, and then once you're interested in it, it's really easy to learn it and just want to actually do it and explore it. One of our main goals is to educate the world. So we give away all of our simulations for free and we provide tools for translators across the world to translate the simulations. The impact of the FED applets right now is worldwide, which is a remarkable thing. I think we're enabling a lot more people to learn physics and chemistry and biology in a way that will that will stick in their minds. And hopefully, they'll have these creative visualizations in their minds that will enable them to do great things. As a future teacher, I don't see how somebody could pass up a great tool like this. All right. So this is very interesting and it's very, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very glad to, to, to be able to show these type of tools because they are very practical, because they are something that you can just start using right away. Uh, we are uh, maybe favoring those teachers that work on the science, science uh, subjects. So, yes, so uh, in, in Colombia, for example, we have normally in school, we have natural science and we have social sciences. Right. So uh, also we have math, we have geometry, we have physics, chemistry for the for the for the not so young ones, and and that's only for the for the uh, obligational. The, well, let's not say obligational, but the, the 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 type of education that is a right for everybody in the country. So I suppose it's very similar in Africa. If not, let me know in the comments. Uh, also, I would like to know which of you are science teachers. Which of the people in the audience are science teachers? Let us know because it is very going to be very important for us. Okay, it's time to introduce the special guest. So very quickly, I'm just going to uh, tell you who this special person is. His name, Mr. Uh, James Sellorn Advenio. He's from Ghana. He is a science and mathematics teacher by profession. He has 20 years of experience in this field and a bachelor's and master's degree in education. He lives in Koforidua, eastern region of Ghana. And concerning integration of technology into classroom and learner-centered teaching, he is a FET fellow with the University of Colorado Boulder. FET, by the way, means Physics Educational Technology. And these are simulations or virtual labs that perfectly demonstrate concepts in STEM in general. He is therefore an expert in the integration of technology in teaching and learning, especially in STEM education. So what is STEM? What is FET? And how can we uh, work with us? How can we uh, make part of these uh, new ideas in education? That's why Mr. James Sellard Advenu is here with us. So let's welcome him. Mr. James, are you here? Yeah, I am here. Hello, Mr. James. Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, everybody. OK, where are you, Mr. James? I am in Koforidia, Ghana, uh, eastern region of Ghana. 
Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about your place of work. Uh, what is the institution? What are the ages that you teach? Good. Um, I am a science, as you have already said, I am a science and mathematics teacher for the past two decades. Um, I have a bachelor and a master of education in science education. And through my education, I come into contact with PET. And so I got in interested and I contacted them. And through the process, I became a fellow. I use the scenes extensively in my classrooms and they are very, very fantastic. And therefore, I have the responsibility to share the scenes with all my fellow STEM teachers in Ghana and beyond. That is what I've been doing. Currently, I teach in one of the basic schools in Kukuridia, Reese Presby Basic A. And I'm also attached to the Municipal Education Office as a teacher, uh, as a, a district teacher support team member. So it means I move to other schools to assist teachers who are having challenges in the, delivering their lessons. So in short, that is what I've been doing for the past 20 years. I have some questions because I think it is very, very interesting for me to, to learn more about education in, in Ghana and in Africa in general. But I have a question that I have to make. So what is the, the view of, stu of students or your students towards science? Are they motivated to study science, to learn science? Do they want to be science people? Of course, yes, because of FED simulations, the students are happy because the simulations are intuitive. They have it on their own laptops. And if they do not understand the concept, they manipulate it themselves to understand the concept. So sometimes I flip the lessons because I want them to explore the scenes. So I just give it to them, go home and then explore. So they go there and then explore. So when we come, we just discuss what we have come out with. And that is very interesting. So most of my students are now highly interested in pursuing STEM subjects when they enter the secondary school level. Mr. James, what does a teacher need in order to use FED simulations? To use the FED simulation, one, uh, you need a, a laptop and then a projector. That is the basic equipment that you need. If you don't have a science lab, where, uh, sorry, if you don't have a computer lab, where you might have computer for if each, each child in the classroom, you can still use only one laptop and a projector. And we have uh, pedagogical technology uh, techniques that uh, you can also apply so that every student in the class can still benefit. All right, but even before we start talking about FED, uh, I think it's important that we talk about STEM education. So we know that STEM stands for uh, science, uh, technology, is it? Engineering and mathematics, right? Exactly. All right. And there's also a variation of STEM, which is STEAM, which includes uh, the A for arts. Arts, yes. Good. Very important in terms of analyzing data uh, and uh, giving hypotheses, trying to reach specific uh, uh, goals and be able to communicate those findings and be able to prove that those findings are actually true, right? So how can, how, how can you summarize STEM education in, in very few words? Okay, so I think you have already said a lot. STEM stands for science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics. Some of the professionals in this field include doctors, nurses, teachers in those fields, uh, mathematicians, statisticians, engineers across most of the fields. Uh, and the, the role of these professionals in uh, national development cannot be overemphasized. Um, but the question is, how are these professionals made how are these professionals made? That is how how the the term STEM education comes in, because 
they must be educated. They must go through the school system to become STEM professionals. That's true. All right, so I'm going to give way to you. Just please feel free to tell us a little bit about uh, STEM and FET simulations, and please show us a little bit of how they work. So your the audience is yours now. Okay, so uh, let me give us a little uh, talk about this uh, STEM. So over the years, STEM teachers and uh, learners use physical, physical laboratory facilities and equipment. However, the research in the, as far back as 1963 shows that these facilities and uh, equipment are not enough. They are not adequate for the use of all students. And recently, this same research was conducted and the findings show that the situation has not changed. So today, when you go to our schools, we don't have equipment. Sometimes we have the labs, but even when you enter the labs, we don't have the equipment. But unlike those days, we are fortunate today because today we have educational technology that can help us uh, teach our students even in the absence of the physical laboratories. They may not entirely replace the physical lab, but they supplement it. So one of these technologies is the FET simulations. This uh, uh, FET simulation stands for Physics Education Technology. And although it has, it is FET, it is physics, but it has other, uh, it, it has scenes for other areas such as chemistry, biology, earth sciences, and even mathematics. FET was founded in the year 2002 by the Nobel laureate Carl Wyman, a professor of physics education at the University of Colorado, Boulder. The first simulations project creates free interactive simulations. First simulations are based on extensive education research and engage students through intuitive game-like environment where students learn through exploration and discovery. They emphasize making connection between real life phenomena and the underlying science. So what are some of the goals of this project? Is to make STEM learning more engaging. That is, to, it, uh, it helps students interact and discover key ideas. It is relevant. That is, students connect the, the, their science with everyday life. It is accessible because it is intuitive and it is understandable. It is, a, it is effective. It uses STEM practices and develop understanding. It is personalized because it demands student agency. The student themselves uh, can use it even at home. Good. So let's talk about accessibility. How do you assess these simulations? The simulation can be assessed online or offline. Um, you can go online and use them if your, your internet connectivity is not good. We know in most parts of Africa, uh, the internet connectivity is not the best. So you can find a good place, then you download these simulations onto your, your smart device, and then you can use them offline. At this point, I would like you to show us that video uh, that illustrates how to assess the simulation. Hello, Eric. Yes, Mr. James. Yeah, so at this point, I would like you to show us uh, that video that teaches how, uh, us how to access the simulations. Here it goes. Yes. Okay. The FET project creates free interactive simulations that facilitate science and mathematics learning at any educational level. 
More than 150 FET simulations are available to students, and these amazing resources can be accessed in multiple languages. To access the simulations, just type FET into any web browser and click on the first site that appears as a search result. You can access all the simulations by clicking Explore Our Sims. The simulations are first displayed in a browse mode classified by subject. By clicking on the Filter tab, the simulations will appear in alphabetical order and you will be able to further filter by subject, topic, grade level, compatibility, accessibility, and language. Filtering will help you simply and quickly find the right simulation. Since its founding in 2002, FET's use of different web technologies has evolved. Although we started with Java and Flash, currently all development has shifted to HTML5. HTML5 allows all new simulations to run on any modern web browser, regardless of device. Since HTML5 simulations are the most modern and easiest to use, to find these simulations, just look for the HTML5 badge on the simulation preview, or select HTML5 in the compatibility section of the filter page. To access HTML5 or Java via ChirpJ simulations, click on the preview icon in the list, then click on the play icon. That's it. Now you can interact with the simulation. Note that the content is often divided into screens that help to scaffold the content. Often, the initial screen introduces the basic concepts and the other screens add complexity to delve deeper into the subject. Some simulations include games with which students can test their knowledge. To share a simulation with your students, copy the URL and provide the link by email or attach it in a document. You can also send it through Google Classroom by clicking on the Google Classroom icon on the simulation webpage. If you have a problem with the internet in your classroom, you can download the simulation and take it wherever you need on a USB stick. You can use it without the need for an internet connection and share it with whoever you like, even through the use of WhatsApp or other electronic messaging apps. Just click the download button. Each simulation has specific resources to help teachers integrate the simulations into their classes or lectures. On the simulation webpage, you will find the description of the simulation and its learning objectives, a guide document that describes the controls and content of the simulation, a video with a description of each screen and simulation controls, as well as examples of its use as part of your class or lecture, and additional activities that other teachers have shared regarding the use of the simulations. Look for those recommended by FET. The activities can come in different formats, such as a PDF file that you can open instantly, editable documents to adapt the activity specifically for your students, PowerPoint documents that often include presentations or questions, or even Google documents so that you can seamlessly use them for remote learning. If you have an activity, share it. To access these teacher resources, you must register for an account. Great, so this is how we can access the simulations. So just type the word FET into any browser and then voila, it will take you to the website and you can assess the simulations. As I said, if you don't have good internet connectivity, you can download the simulations onto your smart device and then you can use in your classroom. I want to, I have downloaded one, so I want to um, share my screen and demonstrate about two or three simulations, how they are used for our Perusa. Okay, so I hope my screen is visible now. So these are the simulations. We have HTML, uh, HTML5, we have Java, and then this one is for all. 
So if you want the Java simulations to be functional on your laptop, then you must also download Java. But for now, let's look at the HTML5 simulations. Okay, let's look at this one. This is one of my favorites because I like chemistry. So, good. So you see that the sims have, this particular sim has uh, three pages. So let's look at the first, the first page. These are some of the buttons. Um, we have the elements. We have the net charge, we have the mass. Now, this is where you can build your atom. So, when you drag one proton into the atom, it tells you which type of atom is that. Is it hydrogen? Does the atom belong to hydrogen? Or which element? You can decide to add another one and immediately it tells you it's helium. You can control that by hiding the type of atom or the type of element that the, that atom belongs to. You can also find out whether the atom that you have built is a neutral atom or is an ion. So if you want to find out, you check this box and when you build your atom, it will tell you whether it's neutral or it is an ion. If you want to hide that, you can uncheck that box. You can also find out the net charge of the atom that you have built. You can find out the mass of the atom that you have built. So that is about the first page of the simulation. Also have other features on the second page. Then, one interesting thing is the game. You have a gamification built into the simulation, and so you can let's let's use this first um, part of the simulation and see. So here. This one is not responding. Let's pick another one and see. Okay, so this simulation can also be used to teach uh, electrical circuits. So the students can assemble the components of the circuit. This is a wire, and this is a battery or a cell. We have a, a resistor. Let's connect this, see. You can connect the resistor this way. We have a light bulb that can be connected. We have a, a switch. And when you switch it on, The student can immediately see the effect. You can see the electrons flowing through the circuit. You can also vary it. You can see the symbols. You can use 
the symbols instead of the diagrams. And then with the resistor, for example, you can vary the resistance. You can increase the resistance and see the effect on the circuit. Then you can reduce it with the cell. You can also increase the voltage. I think I am having some challenge with the response, but you can vary the voltage of the cells and the students can see the effect immediately. You can also use the conventional current instead of electrons, you can see, you can use the conventional current and the students can see how the, the direction of the conventional current as against the direction of the electrons. And these are few of the simulations that can be used by the student to explore these concepts. Up to this point, I think I will stop share, sharing my screen and then we continue to the next part of the program. Mr. James, I have some questions uh, that the people are asking. They, they seem to find it very interesting and, and, and it definitely is. It definitely is because it shows uh, in a very active way, how different uh, simulations can can, can actually uh, help you teach difficult topics. One of the question is, is there a Fed app on Google Play Store? Yeah, we have a Fed app in Google Play Store that you can download. But that one is not free. That one, there is a little amount that you pay for it. Apart from that, all the rest are free. When you download it from the internet, it's free. But when you go to Google Store to download it, there is a small fee that you can to pay before you access it. And I have another question here. It says, Lizzie says, I'm an early education teacher concerned about ways to implement this to learners aged two to six years old. So what recommendations do you have for Lizzie? Two to six years. Um, we have it, it definitely. It's not all the simulations that can be used by those at the, this young age. But we have some of them that are basic. For example, when you come to mathematics, we have some of them on fractions. How to name fractions? How to divide holes into fractions? They can start practicing with them. They may not understand the whole concept at a go, but with time, when they grow up, you come to appreciate the, 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 the use of the country. That will help them build the foundation for, for further education. I have another question. That's uh, my own question. Uh, what subjects do you think uh, Fed simulations can cover? High school subjects or school or primary school subjects? So we have physics, chemistry, biology, we have mathematics, and earth, earth sciences. Nice. There are some other interesting questions. I'm not sure we're going to be able to answer those questions, but they're interesting. Can we tutors of humanity courses like economics and, and the like use some of these simulations? What do you think? These simulations are uh, especially developed for uh, STEM subjects. Um, but then in, in, in economics, for example, some aspect of economics is uh, mathematics. So when it uh, it comes to mathematics and economics, I think some of them might be beneficial. There's another similar one. Please, is there any technology for teaching and making social studies learner center? 
for now, I, 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 in fact, I, I can't tell, but definitely they may, they, they may be. For using social studies, for example, why some of my teachers like using videos. For example, um, how to make a, for example, video of how uh, proceedings in uh, parliament, for example. Uh -huh. So uh, when the, the students watch it, then they discuss it. So uh, I think these are some of the technologies that can be used in the, human, uh, the humanities. Yes. Adeline, also bear in mind that, for example, in the last workshop, we talked about a lot about methodologies. And one of those methodologies was challenge-based learning. And I think it's definitely one that can be specially approached by social science teachers and humanity teachers because of the issues that we are facing nowadays as a humanity. Environmental issues, social issues, uh, migration is one of the biggest issues at the moment. Uh, so definitely challenging your students to, 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 keep, to come up with not possibly not solutions, but proposals, ideas, conclusions, findings about uh, an analysis would, would make them read, uh, research, uh, discuss about these topics, which is definitely an important bit of learner-centered education. Mr. James, any final uh, comments you would like to make about STEM and FED simulations? Yeah, so as I already said, we have specific uh, uh, ped pedagogical techniques that uh, teachers can use to make the effective use of first simulations in their classroom. University of Boulder, uh, Colorado Boulder has mounted some short courses on Coursera, which uh, uh, STEM teachers can uh, assess. However, we have some fees to pay. And then if you are able to go to the FED fellows like me, it will be free. So those uh, teachers who are interested in those courses can contact me and I will facilitate their program. We will do that course for free. So that is all I want to say. And I encourage all STEM teachers to download the, the first simulations and try them in their classrooms. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. James. Uh, you're going to be here with us for the final part again, which is the, the part in which we try to, to use uh, Atomic Digital Lesson to, to, to give feedback on some specific questions created by artificial intelligence. So bye for the moment. See you in a bit. Thank you very much for your information. OK, so and we continue here with uh, some special announcements. Okay, so number one, the attendance link is already in the comment section. Remember that we're giving out a certificate of attendance for each one of the workshops. So you can get uh, um, something for your professional development. Usually uh, it's also something that you can show your, your uh, the people, the policy makers or, or the people in your institutions to show them that you are working to get better, to learn and to, to, to join these types of, of discussions uh, that are definitely going to help you improve the ways in your classroom. Uh, if you attend all four workshops, we're also going to grant you a certificate that demonstrates how many hours you have been here with us. Some people were asking how or if they can see the past workshops. So I'm actually going to show you how you can do that. So by going to Google, or sorry, to YouTube and finding uh, Tommy Digital Interactive Lessons, you're going to be able to visit us on this website, which contains some interesting uh, information, uh, videos, and information about our products and also about uh, the workshops that we develop. Over here, if you go to live, live section, you're actually going to get all those different workshops that we have uh, broadcasted in the last few weeks. So we have workshop number one, which was pedagogical, ped pedagogical tools for learner-centered teaching. Remember that we were answering to the question, why should we implement this paradigm? Then we have 
workshop two, how to implement learner-centered teaching active methodologies. And now live, we have the how to implement learner-centered teaching changing the paradigm. So this is the one that you are watching right now. So if you feel interested, just please go to uh, our YouTube account, Tommy Digital Interactive Lessons. And you're going to be able to see this and more. OK, but uh, also, I, I have a special announcement. So turns out that today is special for many reasons. And this is probably my favorite reason. We are giving out a couple of tablets in the group of teachers that are following us on these workshops. Two tablets for education that are going to help you become even more that innovative teacher, that technological teacher, that teacher that wants to, to, to in include uh, new tools, uh, IT tools and I ICT tools in the classroom. And that, uh, that teachers that demonstrate that they are very, very worried about the education of their students. So we are giving out two tablets, but those tablets go to those teachers who are using our platform. OK, so this is how it works. Number one, in order to achieve, in order to get your diploma, remember that you need to sign up to, to register on the, on the attendance form that is running on the comment section. There you go, for attendance for third workshop. So just follow that link and mark your attendance to get the diploma. But in order to get a diploma, you also need to go to Tommy, that digital platform and create an account. OK, those are the two uh, necessary uh, registration that you need to do in order to get your diploma. Attendance form, just to show that you were here, right? And uh, creating an account in our teacher's platform, Tommy, that digital. Tommy, that digital. That is all you need to enter the browser and you're going to be there. Once you are there, what we want you to do is to start creating lessons, your own lessons. So uh, we're going to have uh, from today to the day of the fourth workshop, which is the last workshop of this series, we're going to give some time for you to create lessons and start using those lessons with your students. By the end of the of this period, when we are back for the fourth workshop, which is probably going to be in about two weeks, uh, we're going to, to select and we're going to look at the dashboard and see what is the teacher that has uh, the, the, the most lessons created in our platform, Tommy that Digital. And the second, uh, and we're going to give out one of the tablet to that to that teacher. Uh, it doesn't matter if that teacher is located in Ghana, in Zambia, in Cameroon, in Senegal, uh, in South Africa. It doesn't matter. We are going to make sure that you get your tablet uh, at your doorstep. And uh, the second tablet goes to the lesson, the best lesson, lesson that we get uh, during that. So for that, you need to uh, send us your proposals. Of what is the best lesson? Uh, through the uh, platform, the, the Telegram community. So you need to join the Telegram community and show and send, show us what you're doing with Tommy Digital. And that's how you're going to be able to get uh, the second tablet. One tablet goes to the person who makes the most lessons and the second tablet goes to the person who makes the most interesting, creative lesson using our platform. We're going to have a judge. We're going to have a person from outside uh, judging these lessons that we receive in our Telegram community, and uh, that person is going to uh, grant one of the prizes to uh, that creative teacher. I am also going to be responsible for your uh, performance, so I'm also going to uh, schedule one special workshop to teach you how to create lessons in our platform. So if you want, you're one of those teachers that want to participate for the for the tablet. You just need to join that lesson, that workshop. You're going to learn uh, with me how to create uh, those lessons, how to create lessons with artificial intelligence, but also how to edit those lessons, how to create lessons from scratch, uh, how to uh, use lessons that are already created in our platform. So many, many different possibilities. And for that, I'm going to make a workshop that is going to take place next week. So if you're interested, do not worry, I'm going to send an email to everyone here 
And if you're interested, just join us for the workshop and you will know more on how to participate. Okay, perfect. So remember, two tablets are for you. There's not many teachers here. The, the, the possibilities of winning is very big. And we really want to make part of that, uh, of your professional development. Uh, maybe it's a small element, a uh, technological device, but it's definitely something that we can do for you. Uh, apart from the from from this series, apart from the conversation in the community, we are worried. We are uh, committed to bettering uh, the professional skills of teachers around the world. Okay, so that was the special announcement. I I, I was trying to hold it, but I couldn't. Uh, I I actually uh, held it for very long, but now it's out. So go ahead and register to continue getting our information. Uh, register for the attendance for today's uh, uh, workshop and uh, create an account on our Tommy that digital platform. Okay, I want to talk a little bit now about 21st century skills. So I'm going to go back to our ebook and show you what I have here. So over here, you're gonna you're gonna see this part of the ebook which uh, talks a little bit about STEM education. You're gonna get some information here about STEM, and you're also going to get a link that you can visit and you can uh, uh, be able to, you're going to be able to, to, to get more information, but also some extra practice and some extra tools that may be uh, approaching your uh, field of specialization, your, your subject, the subject that you're teaching at the moment. So please go ahead and read this. It's definitely going to be important for you. I'm going to ask, uh, uh, I'm a member of the Tommy team to share the screen, to share, sorry, to share the link of the ebook right now in the comment section so that you can take a look at it uh, and uh, continue with your development. So STEM, we also have some FET ideas over here. So an explanation of what is FET and the website in which you can go and look at the uh, simulations and work them on your own and make them part of your next class. Why not? And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about 21st century skills. So this is uh, something that it's definitely important to mention. Uh, this is not absolutely directed to education, but a big part of it is education. And I will tell you why in a moment. So first of all, a little bit of theory. The term 21st century skills refers to a broad set of knowledge, skills, work habits, and character traits that are believed, believed by who? Believed by educators, school reformers, college professors, employers, and others, to be critically important to success in today's world. But remember, not only in today's world, but also in the near future, particularly in college programs and contemporary careers and workplaces. Generally, split, generally speaking, 21st century skills can be applied in all academic subject areas and in all educational career and civic settings throughout a student's life. So this is the definition of what 21st century skills are by the Glossary of Education Reform, a website that I'm also quoting here. They include competences directly related to education, but not only directed to education, and preparation for the present and future world. They include many of the everyday technical and professional skills, yes, but they also extend, the, the, the skills extend to those that will help humanity itself to overcome present and future problems, issues, and to contribute to social understanding uh, among the humanity and to social development. These are some, <clears throat> remember that uh, in the last workshop we covered for the four C's, which are those four skills proposed by the 21st century skills by uh, this paper, uh, which are uh, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Okay, critical thinking in the way that we want our students to be able to uh, analyze and uh, read because sometimes we read, uh, but we don't know really what we are reading or we just try to finish up the text, but reading, like properly reading is actually recognizing interesting information, useful information within the text, uh, information that you can connect with, that you can reuse. And that's something that's gonna be very important in terms of critical thinking. And then informally create their own 
uh, proposals, but uh, their own opinions, their own ideas informally uh, in order to, to, to uh, I don't know, inform other people in order to propose ideas, in order to propose solutions, and maybe in the future in order to participate in uh, ways to overcome difficult uh, situations, issues, problematics around the world. Uh, collaboration. Uh, collaboration is a little bit different to teamwork. We talked a little bit about that in the last session. So teamwork usually uh, tends to be everybody doing similar tasks in order to overcome or to, to, to develop uh, a, a specific or to reach a specific goal. But collaborative work is not always people doing the same, but uh, it's most like people doing their best and whatever it is uh, their knowledge, their abilities, their skills, in order to uh, put their part in a solution of a problem, in a solution of a challenge, okay? So, I mean, not everyone's doing the same, everyone's doing what they do best in order to complete uh, a, a task, okay? And the, the interesting thing is that by doing this collaborative work, you may find yourself doing something that you're not used to or something that you never did before, but it's actually something you're going to learn and that you need to learn uh, and that you may find useful, interesting, may, it may become one of your new interests and passions and that's what Learner Center Education is for. Okay, um, creativity, which we have found that is some, it's not something, it's not like a gift, it's not something that some people have, Every, everybody has a, a, a set of creativity skills or creativity uh, ideas uh, but it's also something that you can learn, okay? Creativity is something that you have to practice, that you have to put into, uh, um, uh, uh, into uh, a task, right? You need to be able to think, to, 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 to research, to, to know about the topic in order to be uh, efficiently creative towards uh, resolving that issue or, or to completing the task. So it's not uh, creativity for the art, it's creativity for everything, okay? And finally, uh, collaboration, uh, which is basically uh, our ability to, 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 to find our, our, our role in society, okay? And to know that we are plural, that we are diverse, and that we can work together if we know well and if we accept differences, if we accept diversity, and if we are able to, to, to create connections with other people, okay? So definitely the four C's are a very big, very big part of the 21st century skills. However, I also want to mention some other skills that are uh, included in this paper. Critical thinking, problem solving, analysis, interpretation, synthesis of information, so that seems quite scientific but it's not only scientific it works for any uh, subject for any task research skills and practices interrogative questioning okay so our ability to use the internet to use um, different sources of information and be able to uh, recognize useful information uh, information that is uh, uh, you, uh, that is actually um, worth using right and that is uh, that you can check that is true that it's not uh, fake news you know like recognizing uh, getting an ability to recognize fake news and working on a basis of things that are actually true creativity artistic skills curiosity imagination innovation and personal expression that comes with communication ah, i think i didn't mention communication before communication is one of the four c's and something important about communication is that it's not just the ability to communicate communicate ideas, but it's also adding, uh, let's say, like a, a new um, a new stage in your process. Okay, so usually we're, we are very used to reaching that moment in which the people are assessed or evaluated, and that's how we recognize that they learn that they learned that they know about something, but there's a new element in its communication which is the ability to communicate that that you have learned so it's not only learning but also being able to tell other people what you know about a specific topic 
All right, and that is definitely one of those skills that are going to be very important in education right now and in the future. We have, and, and it's also part of this set of skills over here, creativity, artistic skills, curiosity, imagination, innovation, and personal expression. There are many ways to communicate ideas, not just pen and paper, not just uh, essays and, 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 and tests, but there's many different ways to express uh, the new knowledge, the new, the new findings. Perseverance, self-management, planning, self-discipline, adaptability and initiative are attitudes, are uh, approaches to, to, to goals, are characteristics uh, that, that usually very uh, most people have but that in different uh, levels. And it's something that we need to start learning, something that we need to include in education. Oral and written communication, public speaking and presentation, and listening. Not just producing, but also being able to receive okay, the ideas from other people. That is a very big part of the, the learning process. Leadership, teamwork, collaboration, cooperation, ability to use virtual workspaces. So uh, when you put people in, 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 in a team and you ask them to, to develop and to solve a task, uh, there's always one of them going to, to, to feel that they need to, leader, uh, to lead, to be the leaders of the, the group. But it's good that a lot of people or everyone has that feeling at some point. So asking people that are not usually the leaders to, to lead a task would be interesting and to create different processes for collaboration, for cooperation, that is also part of education. Information and communication technology, the ICT, literacy in the ICT, so knowing how to use technology and, and uh, for information and communication, media and internet literacy, data interpretation and analysis, and computer programming are definitely part of those skills that we need to include in our uh, set of skills as teachers. Civic, ethical and social justice literacy, economic and financial literacy and entrepreneurship. We want our students to be able to make decisions on their own and to propose new ideas to innovate, but also to be able to develop, develop processes in which their ideas are going to reach to a successful point. All right, that makes part of the entrepreneurial mind Global awareness, very important. Multiculturalism and humanitarianism. humanitarianism. Uh, learning, uh, learning how to be uh, good socially and not only in my special, specific uh, geographical place, but also to people around the world, understanding, me, being, understanding them, being able to read them and, and opening to other people is definitely part of that new education. Scientific literacy and reasoning, the scientific method, something very related to STEM and, and the FED simulation will be covered for the first part today. Very, very important environmental and conservation literacy, teaching our kids and our uh, youngsters and our teenagers how to take care of the world, how to use uh, the elements that, 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 that they get from nature Okay, how to uh, how to preserve places, natural places, how to contribute to uh, the environmental uh, problematics and many different uh, possible skills there. And finally, health and wellness, wellness literacy, including nutrition, diet, exercise and public health and safety. And definitely something that becomes very important in the uh, that is becoming very important every day and more and more, and it's mental health, okay? How to take care of myself, not only physically, but also mentally, and learn how to grow in different ways, uh, uh, and not only physically, but also mentally. So this is all information you're gonna be able to see in the uh, ebook that I'm going to be sharing with you via email and I'm, I'm, that I'm going to share also over here. In the comment section, you can see the Telegram uh, link to register for the Telegram to make part of our community. Remember, uh, there's one tablet, one of the prizes that is specifically uh, going to be delivered to those who share their 
uh, creative lessons uh, in the Telegram community. So please go ahead and join us and participate. Finally, as usual, I have prepared uh, Tommy the digital class, which summarizes everything that we have covered for this class. So I'm going to ask you, the audience, uh, to help us with this. So uh, teacher James, who I'm going to, to be calling to stage now. Mr. James, if you're here, please join us. So Mr. Mr. James, teacher James are, uh, and I are going to be sharing some questions with you. And we're going to give you some, some time for you to enter your answers in the comment section. Then we're just going to tell you what is the correct answer, what the correct answer that made, and maybe give some feedback about that so we can have a better understanding of these topics. So here I am. I'm going to start sharing this with you. Here you go. So remember, this is our platform, Tommy, that digital here, you can open a free account and create as many lessons as you want and present them to your students completely free. Uh, if you want a premium access, we're also going to be handing some premium access uh, in the last session. Uh, so uh, be here, just go ahead, take a look at it and see how you you can start using that, uh, that and other tools in your classroom. So I'm going to play it now. And Mr. Wink, please help me out with the first questions. What does STEM stands for? Please can, okay, um, uh, wait, wait, wait. good. So what does STEM stand for? A, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. B, social, te technical, environmental, mathematics. Space, time, energy, matter. So is it A, is it B, or is it C? Grace Kenyan Louis says A. Sintiche, another one of our uh, teachers that are joining us uh, usually says A, and the correct answer is A. Yes. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics. STEM subjects are often taught independently without any connections between them. Is it true or is it false? Interesting question. Interesting question. Let's see what our audience says. True or false? STEM subjects are often taught independently without any connections between them. True or false? So in the Haruna, is false. Okay. Good. Majority says false. Correct answer. So there is connection between different subjects, right? Yeah. There's always connection between the two uh, all the subjects in STEM. And even within the topics, there's always connection. Um, which of the following is an example of a STEM subject? A. Creating a model uh, Vulcano. B. Building a solar panel car, a solar powered car, writing a poem about nature, and then B. Learning to play a musical instrument. So, this is a difficult one. Some people are saying A. Look at it carefully. Is it creating a model Vulcano? Is it building a solar powered car? Uh, C, writing a poem about nature and the learning to play a musical instrument. So, in your says it's B. Um, Grace say B. Uh, A or B? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A or B. So I, guess, I think I'm going to go for B. Yeah, I think the answer is B. Yes, correct answer. Remember that this, this is a, a, a test created by our platform with artificial intelligence. I just posted uh, STEM and FET, and that's what they started asking me. 
So building a solar powered car. Mr. James, why is this a STEM project and not the volcano? Good. I think volcano is more of a, a geography related. It is a natural phenomenon and it is mostly studied in uh, geography. But building a solar powered car, it's more of a technology. We use uh, the knowledge that we have from uh, physical sciences and apply it uh, with technology so that we can build a solar powered car. So that is very why. Very good. Okay, next. STEM education emphasizes critical thinking, uh, problem solving, and collaboration. Is it true or is it false? For STEM education emphasizes critical thinking, problem solving, and collaboration. Let's see what the people have to say. True or false? So let your answers flow. Is it true? Is it false? There's a false over here. Uh, Alima to Sadia said false. Uh, yes. Inusa said true. Daniel Richlove, Agbovia Day from Ghana, I'm sure, says true. I'm going to go for true. I think yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true, yes. Yes, definitely. So, critical thinking, collaboration all part of the STEM projects. So, so these are the 21st century skills, uh, collaboration. Yes. So with the first simulation, for example, uh, students have to collaborate and then uh, work on it. In the classroom, we usually use the collaborative uh, type of learning. They put them, we put them into groups for them to find out others. They, they do discussion, they share ideas, and that is how it goes. Okay, we go to the next question. What are some of the characteristics of effective STEM education? The characteristics of effective STEM education. A, focus on memorization and rote and root learning. B, integration of real world applications. C, individual work without collaboration. And D, strict adherence to a set of curriculum. So which one is a characteristic of effective STEM education? There's a, a B, there's an A and C here. Uh, Alasan is saying both A and B. Yes. Alasan. Yeah, focus on memorization and road, road learning and individual work without collaboration. I have to, say, to be honest, I have no idea what the correct answer is here. <laughs> Remember. 21st century education, there should always be collaboration. Collaboration. No project has, in the world now, the, the, the emphasis is collaboration because one person, when you want to do something alone, it's really difficult. You have to collaborate with other people within the same country or even internationally to do things. So, so collaboration is one of the, uh, the skills that we emphasize in education. So so it, must people, always, it must always be there. Most people are saying B, so I'm gonna go for that one. Street adherence to okay B. Okay. Correct. Okay. Integration of real world applications. So that's that's a key point of STEM, right? Yeah. Okay. I have another one that is for STEM. Good. So STEM education helps students develop skills that are highly valued in the job market true or false this is a very interesting question this is a very interesting question so in the job market what are some of the skills that are very uh, uh, valued communication collaboration critical thinking so stem education does it foster these skills Some people are saying true, some people are saying false. I would say it is true. I would say it is true. Go for true. Yeah. I'm going to go for true. And yes, it is a correct answer. So STEM actually uh, thinks about the future of students, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay, let me read the next one. The next one is uh, most related to critical thinking. Critical thinking is 
the ability to analyze information objectively and make reasoned judgments. True or false? What do you think, Mr. James? I think it is true. Most people are saying true, yes. Yeah. And I also think it's true. Let me see. Correct answer. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That is critical thinking and, and, and it's definitely one important skill in our in our time. The next one. Which of the following skills is not classified as a 21st century skill? So which one is not? Okay. Creativity, global citizenship, shorthand, and adaptability. So I think I will go for Am I allowed to give my answer? Sure, sure, please do. <laughs> I'll go for a shorthand. I think that one is not there. Why? Know. Yeah. Looking at the rest, creativity, uh, global citizenship, and adaptability. For example, we are collaborating right now. You are from Colombia. I am in Ghana. That is global citizenship. We are in the one world. We and we're definitely world. learning. You must also be adaptable. You must be creative. These are the skills that we encourage you. The there you go. I think you're right. I'm going to go for C. Some people are saying C or B in the audience. Let's see. Yes. C is shorthand is the actually the incorrect answer, which would make which made it the correct answer. Yeah. True or false? There's a true or false question here. Entrepreneurship is the process of designing, launching and running a new business, often initially as a small business. So this may not seem uh, to have a lot of connection with education, but I think it actually does. What do you think, Mr. James? Yeah, education is to prepare individuals for the life ahead of them. And therefore, anything that you have to practice in the world, which is legal, should have something to do with education. Entrepreneurship is something that creates jobs for people, and therefore we must learn it. Uh, School. Therefore, it's something that is related to education. So people are saying true, and I think I agree. This one is true. Yes, correct. And final question, uh, Mr. James, please. Okay, so the, the, the final question says, analytical thinking is the ability to visualize, articulate, and solve complex problems and concepts and make decisions that are sensible based on available information. There are many interesting concepts here, analytical thinking, we're talking about visualizing, articulating, solving complex problems. So it's not just a problem, but actually a complex problem. Uh, making decisions, uh, decisions of decisions that are sensible and based on valid information. I definitely think this is true. Yeah, definitely things is true. Uh, people are saying true in the audience as well. True, true, true. Everyone agrees. So true is the correct answer. There you go. So very good. We had a good job. We had uh, uh, 100 percent of results over here, which is not bad. Yeah, okay. well. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. James. OK, and it's time yeah, to well, say. Yeah. It's time to say goodbye, to, to say that we appreciate the time that you spent with us. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. James, uh, to be here with us, to, to help us with uh, your knowledge, to help us uh, get new ideas on how we can expand the, the, the teaching practice in the classroom, how, how we can engage students into learning more about science. Any, any final words? Uh, I, I, I only want to say that I appreciate the opportunity given to me and all the listeners, all the participants who came and then uh, partook in the session. I appreciate their time and I say thank you. True, yeah, it's definitely, definitely very appreciated because uh, it's, 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 I know, I know teachers are busy people and being here demonstrates a lot from your part. So thank you very much, Mr. James. I hope we're having you in a, in a future uh, workshop. 
for the moment, just uh, we are all going to start working on Fed simulations and see how they can help us. Thanks. Okay. Bye. 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 And again, thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Uh, remember that uh, we have uh, two tablets to give away. So just go ahead and reach our platform, Tommy That Digital, Tommy That Digital, and start creating. Create your lesson; it's free, and start creating. Sorry, create your account. Creating the account is free, and creating le the lessons is also free. You can create as many lessons as you want. You can use artificial intelligence. You can use lessons from the community, from other teachers. You can create your lessons from scratch. Uh, you can use video resources. You can use documents. Uh, you can use uh, interactive questions, such as the one that we just saw, full, true and false, a single choice, multiple choice, matching, completing the sentence. Uh, open questions as well, many, many different possibilities. And if you start using them and you are uh, good at it, you can actually win a, a tablet for education from our part. So go ahead. If you have any questions, don't don't hesitate. Just write me. Join the Telegram community. I'm, I'm there all the time answering your questions and giving uh, information. And uh, the most important, wait for the next and final workshop because it's the closure we're going to uh, have a very special uh, uh, day uh, on that uh, on that day a very special workshop and uh, the focus on that day is a very very interesting question when should we implement this new paradigm in education when is the right time to implement this new paradigm in education so Spoiler alert, you're going to be answering that question. Thank you very much. My name is Luis Enrique Vanegas. I appreciate a lot the time that you spent here. Uh, last video was uh, viewed by more than a thousand people, so we are very happy on that. And we expect that the community continues uh, to grow. See you next time. Remember, there's, a, there's going to be an, a, a, a workshop about how to create lessons. So be attentive. Uh, I'm going to send you an email on that. And I'm going to share information via our uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube uh, pages. Have a nice day. Have a nice rest of the evening for those in Africa. And hopefully, see you soon. Bye bye. Gracias por acompañarnos. Thank you for joining us. Remember to turn on the notification bell.